Hi guys, welcome back. It's the time of fall, the time where the leaves are changing and you're harvesting things out of your garden so you can use them for the rest of the winter. There's a story in the Bible that has to do with some of these, these concepts. And um, I just want to dive into the story and see what we can learn from it. And we find this story in Genesis chapter 39. So if you have your Bibles, let's go there. Genesis chapter 39. We have a character here. His name is Joseph. Let's read verse 1. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. Now is Joseph gone to Egypt on vacation? No. It says that he was taken down to Egypt. If you're taken, you're taken there against your will. So how did he find himself in that position of being sold as a slave? Well, Joseph was the favorite of 12 brothers. And the other brothers got jealous. So they said, let's sell him as a slave. <laughs> and they did. Can you imagine your own family selling you off as a slave, carting you off to Egypt, your own family? And so Joseph now had a, a choice to make. What was he going to do with the rest of his life? He was sold to Potiphar, the captain of the guard. He could be real resentful, couldn't he? He could be resentful and blame his brothers. Well, yes, they sold him into slavery, but what he, could he do about that? He could be resentful to the Ishmaelites. He could be resentful to uh, Potiphar, who bought him as a possession, and, and just try to s stick it to him. Do everything in his power to sabotage Potiphar's household. But he chose not to. He chose to be given, uh, take what he's been given and, and make the best of it. And let's see what God does with that. Verse 2, it says, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Everything he did, I think he, he said, Hey, I'm going to make the best of this situation. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what's right. And the Lord, says, was with him. Verse 3 says, And the master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did prosper in his hand. Potiphar saw that everything Joseph did became better. And so he says, hey, I'm going to make a wise business decision. So Joseph found favor in, the sight, in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had, he put under his authority. Everything Potiphar had, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put in Joseph's care because everything prospers with him. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the Lord and the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in his house and in the field. So everything Joseph did was blessed. In the field, in the house, his business increased because Joseph had his hand in it. God blessed a, a pagan or a, a non-God-following person blessed him, blessed him financially, blessed him in his house because of Joseph's faithfulness. Thus he left all that he had, verse 6, in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Everything was taken care of. Even the only thing he knew was, was the stuff that was in front of him. He trusted him. And, and if we ended the story there, we thought that, that the story ended great, but it didn't. 
we know that Pharaoh's wife had an, his eye on him and, and accuses him falsely of, of adultery. And we fast forward to verse 19. So it was when his master heard the words of which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did to me after this manner, that his anger was aroused. And, and jo- then Joseph's master took him and put him into pri- the prison, the, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in the prison. And so then again, he, he had a choice to make. He could be resentful to Potiphar for throwing him in prison even though he was innocent. But he didn't. He does the same thing. He takes the, the, the things that he has and, and makes good with it. It says, verse 21, But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Same kind of thing. He's in prison, but finds favor there. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made him to prosper. Can you imagine being thrown into prison against, uh, not against your will, against your will, but also... um, without cause and then God takes that situation turns it around and makes you ruler over all the prison essentially other than the 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 jailer things were looking up and then we get to another part of the story another part of the story where there was two um, servants of the king and they were put there in prison and and they both had a dream and Joseph interprets the dream for them. One of them is, is saved and goes back to work for the king, and the other one is, is executed. But the dreams come true just like Joseph said they would. And this one that went back to the king was supposed to bring Joseph's case to him, but he didn't. And we get to chapter 41. Verse 1, it says, And it came to pass at the end of two full years. So Joseph had been there, sitting there in prison, two full years, that Pharaoh had a dream. And behold, listen to this dream. He stood by the river, and suddenly there came out of the river seven cows, fine-looking and fat. They fed in the meadow. And behold, seven other cows came up after them out of the river, ugly and gaunt and stood by the other cows on the riverbank. And the ugly and gaunt cows ate up the seven fine-looking fat cows. So Pharaoh awoke. And he slept and dreamed a second time, and suddenly seven heads of grain came up on one stalk, plump and good. Then, behold, seven thin heads, blighted by the east wind, sprang up after them. And the seven thin heads devoured the seven plump and full heads. So the Pharaoh awoke, and indeed it was a dream. Can you imagine having this dream of, of cows eating each other or, or heads of corn eating each other? That, that would be a little disturbing. And so in verse 8 tells us, Now it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all its wise men. And Pharaoh called them to his, told them his dreams. But there was no one. No one who could interpret them for the Pharaoh. They didn't know what this dream meant. They had no idea. It sounds kind of like Daniel's situation. And then the light bulb turned on. The chief butler, the one that was, was saved, verse 9 says, the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I remember my faults this day. When Pharaoh was angry with his servants and and put me in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, both me and the chief baker, we each had a dream one night, and he said, he and I, each of us had a dream according to the interpretation of his own dream. Now there was a young Hebrew 
man there with us, a servant of the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted our dreams for us. To each man he interpreted according to his own dream, and it came to pass just as he interpreted for us. And so it happened. He restored me to my office, and he hanged him. He, this, this chief butler says, I, I remember I was supposed to bring this guy up to you, and, and I didn't. I remember what I did. He might know what this dream is all about. And so verse, six, or verse 14 says, So Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon, and he shaved and changed his clothing and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream, and there is no one who can interpret it. But I have heard it said of you that you can understand a dream and interpret it. Now again, Joseph is given an opportunity, an opportunity to, for, for payback. He could say all kinds of things about, about Potiphar and his wife or, or how he was there unjustly and, and sold by his brothers, but he didn't. He, he, he could have said, hey, I'm not going to do anything for you, Pharaoh. You're, you're the guy that's got me as a prisoner, but he didn't. Verse 16 says, So Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not me. It is not in me. He can't do it, he says. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. So Pharaoh goes and repeats the dream for, for Joseph. And then Joseph said to Pharaoh, verse 25, The dreams of Pharaoh are, are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Now, God is showing who what to do. He's showing Pharaoh what to do. We've seen this throughout the Bible. God calls and, and shows Nebuchadnezzar what to do. Cyrus what to do. Verse 25, again it says, Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dreams of the Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years. And the seven good heads are seven years. The dreams are one, and the seven thin and ugly cows which came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty heads blighted by the east wind are seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh. This wasn't Joseph saying, look at me, I'm doing all these great things. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Indeed, the seven years of great plenty will come throughout the land of Egypt. God's going to bless Egypt. Oh, he, he liked that. But after them, seven years of famine will arise. All the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. The famine will deplete the land. So the plenty will not be known in the land because of the famine following. For it will be very severe. The, the famine will be so severe that they forgot how there was years of plentiful harvest. The dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice. Because this thing will, is, is established by God. God is doing this and God will shortly bring it to pass. And so Joseph gives Pharaoh this interpretation. There's going to be this, this time of plenty and then there's a time of famine. So much so that, that the time of plenty will be forgotten. And so Joseph could have walked away from there, gone back to prison and said, well, this is the way things are going to be. But he doesn't. He adds some wisdom to this. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this. Let him appoint officers over the land to collect one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven plentiful years. 
to store up those things and let them gather all the food of those good years that are coming and store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities then that the food shall be a reserve for the land for seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt and that the land may not perish during the famine. He says, find somebody. You know what? Pharaoh looks around. He says, I don't know anyone like that, but I think you've got the wisdom. And so he puts again Joseph in, in power there to, to collect during these years of harvest. And he does. He collects them in, in giant grain bins and, and silos and and storage places and collects all this extra food and then the time of famine comes. The time of famine comes and along come his his brothers looking for food. The ones that had sold him into slavery. And what does he do? He feeds them. And, and eventually, if you want to go and read the story, it's, it's an awesome story of, of suspense. <laughs> but eventually he reveals who he is. Friends, we have a, a time of plentiful harvest. We have God's word readily available. We have the gospel, this good news. And it's this, this time of, of plenty And like Joseph, we can take that plenty and store it up for ourselves and then just keep it. Or we can share it with those who are starving. We could be resentful to the people that are around us. We could be resentful to the people that sold us into slavery, so to speak, that wronged us. We could be blame everything on them or we could decide to move forward and let God work through us. To, to witness to, to pagan kings and people in authority. So much so that they realize that God is doing something amazing. Friends, we have an awesome treasure, this, this harvest of God's word. Should we keep it to ourselves? Or should we let those around experience the love of Christ when they're in famine? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us this harvest. Thank you for giving us the the blessings um, from the story of Joseph. And as we try to enact them in our lives, not letting Satan take a foothold with resentment, but combat that with love and diligence. Thank you for your love and thank you for blessing our lives in your name. Amen. Have a good week. We will see you next week.